Okay, there we go. <clears throat> do, 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 do. There it is. Blackwell O'Clock. Yes, it is. Hello and welcome, everyone. Hello, Muckfort. Welcome. Welcome to the last game in the Blackwell series. Blackwell Epiphany. Of note, uh, Rosa and Joey here on the title screen are facing away from the camera. Perhaps uh, to indicate their departure from the series, as opposed to the other four games where they were facing towards the camera. It's kind of a neat little touch. Um, let's see, I don't think we need to change any of the options at the moment. Nah, we're good. Um, also, uh, I, I looked into it last time, and there are bloopers in the Blackwell Deception. Um, they're they're just accessed a different way. You have to you have to play the game in commentary mode to um, to get the bloopers, and I believe this game does the same thing. Um, but I'm not going to be doing that. Except, although I think in this game, I think I might. This game has I think one of my favorite blooper in the in, in the entire series. So I might do a, a very brief um, look at the uh, at the commentary mode just for that. When we're done, though, we'll we'll worry about that later. Howdy, Mr. Jill. All right. So, let's get started. Blackwell Epiphany. Snow. Uh, Your teeth are chattering. Oh, okay. No, they're not. It's him. Detective Durkin, I'm here. Are you on your way? Yeah, sorry about that. I've got a lot of paperwork on them. I won't be able to make it. What? I've been waiting here a half hour. You there? Good. Take a look around and let me know if you find anything. Take a look around? For what? You know the deal. I can't tell you. Yeah, I know. We'll pay you the usual rate. Talk to you soon. He stood you up again? Yep. Well, he's paying us to check out this dump, so let's get started. Left click and right click. The usual AGS stuff. It's a fire hydrant, probably frozen solid. That's way too heavy to lift, not to mention illegal. No parking from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. That's way... Horatio Street, totally deserted. A shame they don't have coffee to go. I'm running low. Coffee! My fifth cup of coffee this evening, burning hot. The dead don't sleep and neither can I. All of the coffee. It says Karth House, under all the graffiti anyway. This is where Durkin told us to meet him. So we're working for Durkin now, it seems. That's kind of cool. Just an old trash bag. Looks like it's been there for a while. It's just full of old trash. Nothing useful. Bricks. Reclaim. Revolt. Rebuke. Reject. Retaliate. It's just a brick. Or is it? <laughs> yes, it is. Look at him. He doesn't even notice the cold. Dialed in? What you mean, like, how, how do you mean exactly? 
Like there, do you mean like the uh, the like ambient sounds and stuff around around the place? The door isn't in terribly good shape, but it's solid enough to keep me out. Even if I could reach it, what would I do with it? Locked, of course. Switch characters. Just old trash. Someone dumped it here and forgot about it. Reclaim what? I'm not sure I quite get the message here. It says revolt. Against what? Who can say? Rebuke what exactly? Stupid graffiti? Reject is the word. What an eyesore. <laughs> Retaliate against what? If you gotta have a message, at least make it clear. There's a reason why I keep my hands in my pockets. There's less disappointment that way. As usual, Joey can't touch anything. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, I've said before that the games get better and better as you go on, and Epiphany really is, like, the pinnacle of the series. It's really, like, it brings all of, like, the game design, all of the game desi design lessons uh, that Dave Gilbert has learned throughout making the series just to a, to a peak. And the best part is, like, it keeps getting better from here. He's made other games after this. And they keep getting better. <laughs> Don't see the point of that thing. If this dump caught fire, why bother saving it? Better get her inside before she's as blue as I am. Why would someone climb all the way up there just to paint that mess? No parking from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. Thrilling. Not a soul in sight. Except mine, anyway. Joey, I'd like to talk to you. What is it? Cold, wet, and tired. Just another day in the office, I guess. The hours might be terrible, but look at all the interesting people you meet. Well, <laughs> former people, anyway. <laughs> the Karth House seems to be an old hotel that's been condemned for years. Detective Durkin asked us to meet him here. As for why, he didn't say. So far, he's a no-show. Detective Durkin helped us out with a case earlier this year. He doesn't know who we are, but he knows enough not to ask questions. He occasionally asks us to consult for him. I really hope we're not wasting our time here. Why? Have you got something more important to do? Yes, not freezing to death. <laughs> I don't get it. Durkin's the one who hired me. Why is he being so cagey? Plausible deniability, Red. What did you expect? I don't know, a bit of courtesy? Think about it. He can't let on that he's hired someone like you, can he? So he's got to keep his distance. That way, if anybody asks, he doesn't have to lie. Great. So I'm the NYPD's dirty little secret. I knew you'd do me proud one day. <laughs> Let's have a little talk. What? So, how much does shilling for the cops pay these days? I don't know. Does it matter? It's not like we have a choice. And I'm not shilling, I'm consulting. Whatever looks good on the business cards, sweetheart. Where's your business cards? So, do you know anything about this place? Just what I read on the internet, which isn't much. Look, don't sweat the Durkin thing. Just focus on the job in front of you. Well, he is paying us, whether we find anything or not. That's the spirit. There's always a bright side, even on a night like this. Speaking of the internet... Let's check our email. J. Leader. Miss Blackwell, I am representing Hannah Sharp in her divorce trial. It is my understanding that you are aware of her husband's affair. Please contact me at your earliest convenience. J. Leader, M.R.Y. Law. Ooh... Ooh, I forgot about that. <laughs> Ouch. Aw. Oh. oh, that sucks. <laughs> Seb Frederick, are you the lady I spoke to at Munray's last year? I looked you up. Spiritual consultant? Really? I don't know what you did back then, but you better stay away from Columbia for a while. They caught you on a security camera poking in Jamie's room. Uh-oh. Undisclosed. For all networking and security needs, contact Tomo. 
thanks, but I really prefer not to be involved. Sorry, wrote Angela Blackwell. Ms. Blackwell, understood. Thank you for your time. J Leader, MRY Law. Sam Durkin. Hey, something's come up that might be up your alley. Come meet me at the Karth House, corner of Horatio and Greenwich. 7 p.m. You can't miss it. The place is a wreck. Usual deal applies. I'll fill you in there. SD. It could, yeah. I mean, it. That's probably like the the best possible outcome. Like he 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 finally just like went. You listen. I had an affair with this woman, and I'm sorry. I'm coming clean. And then she's like, "Yeah, cool. I'm divorcing you." <laughs> yeah. Look on one clue, then another to combine them. How could he call me out here and not show up? That's just so unprofessional. Well, at least he told you he wasn't going to be able to make it. He didn't just ghost you. Let's call him. Durkin. Hi, it's Rosangela Blackwell. Uh-huh. What exactly am I supposed to find? You know the deal. You tell me. I need more to go on. Sorry, but my hands are tied. Look, I don't appreciate being treated like this. What, you want bottled water and a limo? No, I need more details. I can't give them to you. Sorry. Can you tell me anything about the Karth house, at least? It's condemned. Yeah, I can see that just by looking at it. Anything else? You know how this works. You tell me when you've got something. If you need my help so badly, why are you acting this way? Never said I needed your help. But if you turn up anything, you're now obligated to report it. Assuming you want to be paid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know how this goes. Good. Jerk. Hmm. Hanging up on him? Yeah, that'll show him. <laughs> uh, also, she mentioned looking it up on the internet. So let's look it up on the internet. Carth House. City Post Real Estate. Carth House, 304 Horatio Street. This beauty of a wreck aptly describes this raw <laughs> canvas for you to create your dream home. You've always wanted to start from scratch, and here's your chance. Close to all major subways and is pet friendly. Priced very sensibly in accordance to condition at four million five hundred and thirty two thousand dollars. <laughs> Fucking New York. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> anyway, let's actually go in there. As Joey. Alright, I'm going in. Try and stay warm. I'll do my best. It's a fixer upper. Hmm. Lovely. Hello? Anybody there? Anything? Not yet. Let me look around a bit. I'll get back to you. Yeah. Uh, this game wasn't released too long ago. Oh, of course, I never remember exactly when because I have a terrible head for dates. Um. But yeah. I don't feel like that price would have gone up too much due to inflation, but then again, <laughs> maybe... Maybe it did, because we have had uh, some inflation since then. 2014, okay, thank you. Just a light switch. I guess there's nothing st So, yeah, nine years ago now, wow. An old rotting wooden board. How is this game nine years old? I'm no electrician, but it looks like a fuse box. I can't touch it, but it's not like I know anything about fuses anyway. That door is due for this scrapyard. It leads to a stairwell. More painted junk. It's coated with all sorts of stuff. None of it nice. Full of food wrappers and old needles. Not much else. That thing is barely holding itself together. <laughs> That's a threshold for vintage gaming. I mean, it's a it's a moving threshold. <laughs> Retro is is all relative. Kind of ramshackle. I guess security isn't this building's top priority. It's the elevator. That thing is getting way too hot here. But stay if you wanna. I left the key. Check the stairs. Hmm. Huh. Seen one dilapidated elevator shaft, seen them all. 
5.73 million. Jeez. <laughs> oh boy. Jesus, what's holding this dump together? Rubber cement? It goes back to the lobby. Oh, hello. Huh? Hello? Hey, get back here! Ugh. I can't make it any further. I'm too far from Red. If I want to get up there, I need to get her closer. Right. Looks like a box of old electrical junk. And, like, the whole, like, real estate massive jumps in prices that happen at the drop of a hat. Looks like a wrecking ball hit it. Come to think of it, that's probably what happened. People revolt, reclaim, retaliate, rebuke, reject. Note that revolt is underlined. Interesting. Bunch of junk fell here when the floor above collapsed. If it's all the same, I'll use the front door. It leads to the third floor. I'm too far from Red. If I want to get up there, I need to get her closer. All right, so Rosie. It's covered in graffiti and possibly locked, neither of which are a problem for me. <laughs> need to get Rosa inside. But while we're here, let's explore. Whoever used this thing probably didn't care much for privacy. <laughs> Gross. Ah, <laughs> uh, I'll leave toilet searching to the living. <laughs> Where's James Sunderland when you need him? The view's pretty nice, but it's a shame about the rest of the place. I can't just go floating off into the skyline. I'm stuck here. This side of the newspaper just shows a bunch of ads. Don't know what I can do with it. Nothing. The paper is waterlogged and stuck to the floor. An empty bottle. Looks like it used to be full of cheap booze. I just can't come to grips with it. The elevator, such as it is. Dark, cramped, yep, it's an elevator shaft, all right. Okay, well, there's a whole lot of nothing in here. <laughs> I will always make Silent Hill two jokes. 32-bit <laughs> kid, thank you for the bits. And also hello and welcome to 32-bit kid, and also to Osomelo, and also to Star. Well, we definitely got a spook. We do? A woman. Only got a brief look at her before she buzzed off. Why didn't you go after her? She's too far away. We need to get you inside to bring her within range. Fine, let's hurry then. It's freezing out here. She's cold enough without me making it worse. Um... I'm going in again. Uh-huh. Hold on. The note said check the stairs, which I didn't do. Oh, wait, right, okay. No, I remember what to do now. I did check the stairs. <laughs> I just forgot what part of the stairs I checked. Hey, I'm back. Find anything that can get me inside? Working on it. So at this point, we have received a clue in the form of an underlined word near the stairs. This one. This brick is definitely hollow, but the ice around it is so thick, I can't pull it loose. We don't have an ice pick, but uh, coffee will do the job. <sighs> the cost of this coffee is so going on my expense report. There, it's melted. I better do whatever I need to do before it freezes again. Not exactly a secure hiding spot, but who'd want to break into this place anyway? Uh, who besides me, I mean. Thank you. 
pretty standard key. I found it behind a fake brick outside the Karth house. It fits. And in we go. Hmm. Nice place, huh? It has its charm, I guess. Yeah, it's got something all right. Come on, we have a spook to chat up. I like how the music changes when Rosa gets inside. That's creepy. This door rotted off its frame a long time ago. There's nothing behind it. It was just left here and forgotten. It's a light switch. Nothing. It's been exposed to the elements for too long. It's rotted and useless. It's too rotted to be useful. It's an old desk. It's been exposed to the elements for so long it's falling apart. If that desk had drawers, they rotted off long ago. I really hope we get paid for this job. Otherwise, this could be our future home. Well, everyone already thinks you're crazy. Homeless is just the next obvious step. <laughs> Thanks. Wow. It's the elevator. I don't think it's working. They prevent people from getting in, but that's about it. Whoever put these up probably didn't have insulation in mind. Look at that mattress. You think people slept on that? The people who slept here weren't exactly spoiled for choice. If I want to go outside, I'll use the door. Not working. It's full of old newspapers, candy wrappers, and used syringes. It's full of old needles. Even with gloves, I'm not putting my hand in there. Smart. It's covered in grime, dust, and... Is that blood? I will never be that tired. <laughs> the door rotted off this frame long ago. It looks like it leads to a stairwell. Still snowing. I don't think it's going to stop anytime soon. Well, it's not like we're going anywhere. I'm guessing it's a fuse box. Well, that didn't work. The fuse looks like it shorted out. All of them. The fuse looks like it shorted out. Something must have shorted. It's stuck in the on position. Good job, Rosa. You broke all of the fuses. I think... I think this is the first and only game in the series where Rosa and Joey can actually be in different rooms, like, it, it, intentionally, or, yeah, like, see, see yeah, yeah, so you, you can call Joey, so, like, there are places where, in the previous games, you could be in different rooms, but only because you didn't have a choice. But I think this is the only game where you can actually split them up on purpose. I might not be describing that properly, but hopefully you get the idea. I think that fell from the floor above. I see why this place was condemned. Not going to happen. It's full of old electrical equipment. Not exactly the best place for it. Old cables, frayed wires, a fried circuit board. Hmm, there's an old fuse at the bottom of the pile. Looks intact. It's a fuse. It looks intact. Look at all this stuff. It must have all fallen from the floor above. Even if I cleared it away, I couldn't climb the stairs. They're completely collapsed. It goes back to the lobby. No wonder it's so cold in this building. It's completely exposed. I couldn't climb up there even if I wanted to. There's no door on the frame, but it's not like that does me any good. The stairway is blocked. I can't get up there. It leads to the second floor. I guess that was a bathroom before whatever happened happened. There's nothing in there. Thank God. I'd admire the view if it wasn't so damn cold. 
I'd better not risk climbing out there, especially in this weather. It looks like a beer bottle. It's empty. It's stuck to the floor. That's just as well. I probably don't need it. I can't see what's on the other side, but this side shows a bunch of ads for day spas and beauty salons. Yeah, something like that. Or like, um... Rooms where, like, Joey can go, but Rosa can't. Like, uh, yeah, any room that Joey can go in, but Rosa can't. Um, like the, um... Uh, uh, like, um, Tiffany's room, for example. Okay, the City Post, late city final. Wednesday, December 12th, 2012. Letter page 24. Drug raid reveals more than drugs. Police raided a Chelsea tenement last night and uncovered 10 pounds of heroin and $100,000 in cash. But what the police also uncovered is much more shocking. The tenement, condemned for years and exposed to the elements, was home to several drug users and transients who had been living on the premises. They were half-starred, wearing rags and freezing to death, but they didn't care, Officer Leah Piero, who led the raid, said. They were so far gone. The body of an unidentified woman was also discovered. She was just lying there, Piero went on to say, surrounded by a bunch of other addicts. None of them seemed to notice. They probably would have all joined her before too long. That elevator doesn't look too safe. Nothing. The elevator's dead. Okay. Well. Joey, get over here. You bellowed? <laughs> well, Rose is inside now, so. Look at the state of this place. You think it's safe? Dozens of homeless people were living here not too long ago. If it was safe for them, it should be safe for us. And by us, I obviously mean me. <laughs> we can get him upstairs now. So let's do that. Hi, lady. I guess if you have to haunt a place, you can't beat a room with a view. If it's all the same, I'll use the door downstairs. It goes back to the stairs. It's a piece of black plastic with a metal bit on the end. I have no idea what it is. Just a closed elevator. Dark, cramped, yep, it's an elevator shaft, all right. She looks pale and strung out. It's hard to place her age. Could be anywhere between 20 and 40. She's also shivering and scratching her arms. I know the dead can't feel the cold, but something is definitely giving her the shakes. Hello? Hey. Oh, you're not. Not what? Just not. Were you expecting someone else? Someone. Could you tell me who it was? Maybe I can help look for him. No, he'll be here. Oops. So I'm Joey. What's your name? I don't know. Mary? Your name is Mary? Sure. <laughs> Look, this is no place to be during a blizzard. It's fine. It fits. Fits? Fits how? It fits. How about we get you out of here? Get you cleaned up? Maybe something to eat? No, I'm hidden now. Hidden? You're not hiding. You're right there. I'm hidden and I fit. It's how it should be. Mary, could you tell me the last thing you remember? How'd you end up here? I... I was here. And before that? The words. The... No, that's not... Not what? How it works. What are you talking about? Anywhere between 20 or 40. Also good way to describe my mental age. <laughs> Relatable. <laughs> so how'd you end up in a dump like this? It's a place. Yeah, it's a place. One that's fallen apart. You shouldn't be here. No place else to go. Can't go home. Depends where home is. Where are you from? Here, nowhere, in front, and back, doesn't matter. I fit here. So about this place? It's fine. It fits. Just a face here. 
One of many. Are you familiar with a cop named Sam Durkin? He's a detective. Kin? Durkin? No, don't know. Are you familiar? Kin? So I heard there was some police action here recently. What are you talking about? The cops. I heard they raided this place. Why would the police bother coming here? That's the whole point. What point would that be? Oh, forget it. So... I told you, I don't know what you're talking about. <sighs> Fair enough. So, about the cops coming here? I told you... <sighs> Fair enough. So, Mary, was it? Uh-huh. Mary who? It doesn't matter. I'm just Mary. A newspaper article described a drug raid at a condemned building in Chelsea. Several drug addicts were found, and an unidentified woman was found dead. The ghost on the third floor of the Karth house is named Mary. Or so she says. I have to get going. Take care of yourself, Mary. Okay, then. Hey, is it just me, or is that the same kind of couch you've got at home? No, it's totally different. It is the same couch. <laughs> Probably newer than yours. Better shape, too. Can we stay on task, please? Just saying. Free couch. <laughs> God damn it, Joey. <laughs> Let's have a little talk. What? How'd a squat hole like this last so long in this neighborhood? Gentrification is a slow process, but pretty soon old buildings like this won't exist anywhere. And this is a bad thing? Just saying. The cops sure cleared this place out in a hurry. Of course, they left a mess behind, which we have to clean up. So what's your take on our spook? I haven't spoken to her myself yet, but she must have been living rough before she died. To end up in a place like this, she'd have to. Ugh, coldest night of the year and we have to go to the least insulated building in the city. Could be worse. At least you have a warm place to go home to. Whoever lived here, didn't. Hmm, point. Joey, I'd like to talk to you. You rang. That's also new to this game. Um, they'll ha the characters will just have like random conversations with each other as they're wandering around, which is kind of cool. That's always a neat little feature in any game. I've seen pictures of condemned buildings, but I never thought I'd be in one. Well, you're here. I just hope you had all your shots. I think this place is a drug den, or it used to be. A hiding place for lost souls. Seems right up our alley. You think there'd be more ghosts here than just the one? So what's she like? The ghost, I mean. Incoherent, babbling, a total basket case. Typical spook, in other words. Okay. So... The article said the drug raid happened in Chelsea. The Karth house is in Chelsea. It's probably safe to assume that the drug raid happened here. There's a ghost on the third floor of the Karth house. She told Joey her name was Mary. If anyone would know something about the drug raid, it would probably be Detective Durkin. Did Durkin know Mary? Is that why he sent me here? Hmm. Mary could be the unidentified dead woman in the article. Sam! Durkin. It's me again. Uh-huh. You find anything? Can you tell me about the drug raid that took place here? You heard about that, huh? I might have read about it. Well, it was pretty by the book. The team went in, took the stuff, and brought everybody out. Nothing unusual took place. I wasn't there, so I can't really say. I think I have a lead on someone who died here. Great. Don't say any more. Swing by tomorrow, if and when you know for sure. I'll call you back if I find anything. Right. Okay. Um, right. So what we actually need to do... Squeak, squeak. Is we need to get this elevator working. The fuse looks like it shorted out. And we can do that by replacing these um, fuses. Good thing I'm wearing gloves. Hey. I 
better not go in there. That elevator could collapse any minute. The elevator looks like it's stuck between two floors, probably for the best. This is kind of a clever puzzle. Um, what we actually need to do is th that, I believe. So we can't get to the basement or the fourth floor, but we can get to the lobby, second floor, or third floor. So if we open the elevator on the third floor, and then switch to Joey. Not much to see, except that the elevator is stuck one floor down. Actually, let's do a little more scouting first. Just so you can see the, the logic that goes into this. <laughs> if, you haven't if you haven't already figured it out. The elevator, such as it is. The ele elevator's stuck between floors. Doesn't look like it's gonna budge. Okay. Hey, over solo. Hello, hello. Okay. So this this thing right it's here. It's a piece of black plastic with a metal bit on the end. I have no idea what it is. But I want it. Also, there is no point in doing that to a spook, since you know they can see me. <laughs> then. Yeah, this puzzle is kind of intended to like teach you how to use. Rosa and Joey in different rooms, which is kind of clever. So, Rosa can't get up here, but she can get to the second floor. So if we blow this thing into the elevator shaft... We can then... Oh, hold on. Wait. Don't do that. I gotta open the door first. And then switch the fuse to floor two. And walk on up here. And there it is. Memory stick. I think it's some kind of memory stick or card. It's definitely some kind of memory card. And it looks like it's compatible with my phone. Sure, just stick it right in there. There's no way it could have a virus on it. <laughs> hey, you find something? I think so. Take a look at this photo. Teamwork. Is this her? The ghost, I mean. Yeah, sorta. She looks a lot better in that photo, I'll tell you that much. Look at the file name. This was a headshot photo. I guess she was an actress. Could be. You wouldn't know it from looking at her. The spook upstairs looks like life chewed her up and spat her back out. <laughs> In this game, apparently. Also, that's a coat. She actually is wearing non-black clothes underneath that coat, and we do see her take the coat off in a few scenes. But she has this nice, cozy... Can't say much for this building, but the view from here is something else. Black winter coat. I'll take your word for it. I can barely look out there five seconds without the snow covering my glasses. Right, I forgot. You have to suck the romance out of everything. Just saying. <laughs> this type of memory stick is compatible with my phone. It had a digital picture of Mary on it. What do you suppose went on in this place? Drugs, booze, the usual squatter stuff. It must have taken something really bad to get everyone to leave. Okay. So the Gotham Collective. What might that be? City Theatre Community Board. It is with a heavy heart that we announce that the Gotham Collective Theatre Company is closing its doors. It has been our absolute pleasure to entertain you for the last four years. What a ride. For information on our past performances, please download this file. gccastandcrew.txt 
Thanks, I think I will. Uh, there must be hundreds of names on this list. I'll never find what I'm looking for just by reading it. I'll just save a copy to my notes app. Hopefully I can find something to cross-reference it with. Gotham Collective. We found a photograph of a ghost on a memory stick. The photo was an actress's headshot and the words Gotham Collective were written on it. A theater company, most likely. Downloaded a file that contains a list of all the cast and crew members for every performance that the Gotham Collective put on. This list was posted online by the Gotham Collective. That's all I know. I'm not sure what the Karth House and the Gotham Collective have to do with each other. I really doubt that Durkin is a part of the Gotham Collective Theater Company. I don't see what a theater company has to do with a drug raid. The words Gotham Collective were printed on a headshot photo of Mary. I can only assume she was a member. This list was posted online by the Gotham Collective. That's all I know. There's no mention of the Karth House anywhere on the list. It doesn't look like Durkin was in any plays by the Gotham Collective. Not that I expected him to be. I don't see what this list has to do with the drug raid. If Mary was a member of the Gotham Collective Theater Group, she's probably on this cast list. Gotcha. There's only one Mary who was a cast member. Mary Meehan, who was a cast member of a play called The River Wall. Beautiful. Detective Durkin does improvisational dance DLC. Oh, please. Please, yes. <laughs> a theater performance put together by the Gotham Collective. Mary was a cast member. The ghost's full name was Mary Meehan. She was a member of the Gotham Collective Theater Group and performed in a show called The River Wall. Before we go any further, let's have Joey talk to her again because we found a bunch of new information. I could just have Rosa call him, but I decided not to for whatever reason. Detective Durkin DDR. Dance so Detective Mary? Evolution. Uh huh. I don't know. So I told <sighs> Parent. So Mary Mian was it? Uh huh. Just checking. It doesn't matter. I'm just Mary. So you're part of the Gotham Collective Theater Company? Not anymore. What happened? Nothing. Everything. Come on, tell me about your acting days. Sounds fascinating. It's not. It's nothing. I'm nothing. You're nothing? Yes. Come on. It's n The list is on that phone thing that Red's carrying. And even if I had it, I'm not going to ask her about hundreds of names one by one. So I caught your show, The River Wall? Oh, God. What? Just don't. I, I just want to be a face, okay? No more. I just can't. I have to get going. Take care of yourself, Mary. Hmm. City Post Theater Desk, River Wall, a review. You'd think one would be jaded after so many vanity projects by the Gotham Collective, but the, but the River Wall, based on the 1923 short story, has finally taken it one step too far. Setting aside the non-existent direction and the lackluster set design, both of which can be forgiven due to the low-budget nature of the production, nothing can forgive the choice of casting Mary Meehan in the lead role of Pamela. Displaying all the signs of an actress who took theater way too seriously in high school, she infuses her role with such over-the-top passion it becomes laughable rather than dramatic. Lacking any ambition or energy, I very quickly wished she would drown in the river alongside the play's titular wall. Rating, one star. Jeez. Harsh. Unnecessarily harsh. Okay, same thing. So, Mary? Uh-huh. It is, indeed, an awful review. So I read that review of your show. You... you did? Yeah, I'm sorry. Mary? I thought I could get away from it, become just another face in the crowd. Is that something you really want? 
No, just needed to get away. It shouldn't have followed me here. Nobody should know me here. Surrounded by people who don't know me, it's good that way. Better that way. People? What people? These people. Lost people. Like me. Alone, but not alone. Mary, I hate to tell you this, but there's nobody here. What are you talking about? Look around. Carefully. There's nobody here but us. I don't see what you mean. Yes, you do. Nobody's been here for months, at least. How could... They left me? They wouldn't have just left me here. Would they? Alone? I'm afraid they did. But you're not alone now. We're here. No, it can't be empty. That was the whole point. I can't be alone here. I can't. Where is everyone? Hey, do you know where everyone is? I'm afraid everyone's gone. Gone? Why would they be gone? And without telling me? Without me knowing? I would have remembered. I would have noticed. What did you notice, Mary? Huh? You weren't thinking too clearly before. You are now. Come on. Get away from me. I don't belong here. Not anymore. We probably should get after her. Yes, let's. They're gone. Everyone. Yeah. I remember now. I was cold, then warm, then... nothing. I feel absolutely nothing. That review, it seemed like it was everything. Now it's just nothing. To die over nothing. Poor woman. To end up in a place like this. Either way, she won't have to stay here for much longer. Yep. He's still there. It's red. Who else would it be? She looks pale and she's also sh It's time to go, Mary. Go? How? Where? I can't seem to leave this place. Don't worry, Mary. We're here to help you. Help me? How? I can't seem to leave this place. That is what Joey's tie is for. Mary, I'm gonna have to ask you to take this. What is it? Just trust us, Mary. We're here to help. Okay. Rosa did not fall. Is it right? Is it right that this place should feel so good? It's where you need to be, Mary. That's all. I thought the Karth house was where I needed to be. After that review. Maybe... I would have been okay. <laughs> that critic was an idiot. That's nice of you to say, but you didn't see me perform. I was awful. Doesn't matter. I used to write reviews. I know these things. The critic was an idiot. Really? He said you had no ambition, but you also took it too seriously. How is that even possible? And how can you show too much passion and lack energy at the same time? I... I never thought of it that way. <laughs> I'm sorry, I know it doesn't do much good to hear this now, but... No, no, it's good to hear it. Even if I had heard it six months ago, I wouldn't have listened. But I'm listening now. So thank you. It's time to go, Mary. Yeah. Bye, Mary. You okay? I'm fine. Did I fall? No. You're still standing. Don't sound so surprised, Joey. Mental control. That's all it takes. Yeah. Sure. Let's get going. <laughs> After you. I love that callback. <laughs> Hello? Oh, hi. Can I help you? What heck? No. Not yet. Oh, crap. Hey, wait! Durkin. It's me. You need to send someone here right away. Someone's been shot. Shot? Who was it? What happened? I don't... Hello? Zoop. Blackwell, <laughs> what's going on? I believe um, that's... Sir? Hello? Are, 
are you? We're here to help. Don't worry. No. It's too late. We're not safe. Even Grace is not safe. I'm sorry, friend, but whoever Grace is, you're past worrying about her now. No, you don't understand. You don't. You'd be surprised what we understand. You? No. The Bestower. I need the Bestower. Hit me. Bestower? You know about Bestowers? Uh, about us? I know enough, but not enough to save me. Well, it's your lucky day. We just happen to be in the saving business. You don't understand. They will find me. I hate to break it to you, but I think they already did. No. No! Holy... Ugh. Did you see that? What was it? What the hell was it? I think that's the first time we actually see a ghost, like, manifest for the first time out of a dead body. He just climbs out. <laughs> Lower East Side, May 27th, 1931. A flashback. So, I guess this is it. I believe so, my host. A tailor shop, huh? You think they've got anything in my size? A lost soul in need of saving, and you want to rob its place of business. Look at this dress I'm wearing. It's ruined. I figure I'm owed. Duty first, my host. Petty theft after. I'll see. <laughs> Madeline! <laughs> Madeline! There she is! You remember her, right? Does she have to stare like that? Drives me batty. And if we look at the inventory bar, we can see that the woman I'm playing right now is named Jocelyn. And I can switch between her and Madeline just like I could with Rosa and Joey. Which is cool. It's covered with gunk. I can't see through it. A tailor shop. Looks like it's been shut down for a while. A tailor shop. Nah. Nah. Can't reach it. It's covered with gunk. It's boarded up. No getting through there. What do you know? Locked. Won't budge. Look at that. This place is falling apart. Brick. Look at that. Hey, Madeline? Yes, my host. Could you stop calling me that? Stop calling you what, my host? That. I'm no host. I am sorry, my host. That is what you are. It's rain in buckets. Indeed. Most fortuitous. Fortuitous. It enables us to do our duty unperceived. <laughs> and we can converse without any awkwardness. Great. Wouldn't want this to be awkward. <laughs> There's another good blooper relating to that uh, that line, uh, which I will not uh, quote because I might be going through this game in... I might do a quick blooper run through the early parts of this game just for some of my favorites. We'll do that later. Just think, I could have been dancing at the supper club tonight. If those contortions could be referred to as dancing, then you are correct. I'm not going to apologize, you know. For what? Trying to transfer our link to that Joe Gould fellow? Like I said, I ain't going to apologize. I didn't ask for this. Neither did I, my host. Neither did I. You're not mad. After centuries of this existence, I have learned to put my personal feelings aside. Yeah, well, I ain't got centuries. Well, see ya. Certainly, my host. The window is boarded up and covered with dust. It is impossible to see through it. My host, Jocelyn Contis. I have been her guide for two months. Jocelyn Contis. The front entrance, blocked by wooden planks. We cannot leave yet. We have a duty to fulfill. We cannot... I really wanna, but Maddie will give me an earful if I leave now. My host, I have been... My host? Yeah? I know this transition has not been 
easy. Yeah, well, I always thought my uncle was cuckoo. At least now I know why. We made fun of him, you know? I am aware. It pained him greatly. Yeah, I guess now everyone's gonna make fun of me. So I got that to look forward to. Are you ready to take this seriously, my host? You don't think I'm serious? I think your head is in the clouds. Shows what you know. I think you've been dead too long. <laughs> dead too long? Whatever do you mean? I just want to live, you know? Is that so wrong? You appear living to me. I'm living for the dead. It's different. How so? It just is. I believe we should return to our duty, my host. Yeah, sure. If you could just wait here, my host. Uh-huh. It's not like I got anything else to do. Hello? Is anyone about? I am a friend. Nobody's there? Can we go? Soup is playing tonight. If we hurry, we can catch him. Patience, my host. <laughs> I sense a lost spirit here. We cannot leave our duty unfinished. A quiet night, despite the rain. It appears to be a coat of some kind. I cannot wear it. I cannot open the window. It, it has been a long time since I have seen my reflection. I cannot touch the mirror. Hmm, so garish. I cannot touch it. Some clothing items. I cannot wear them. It is a simple bell. I am incorporeal and unable to ring the bell. A door leading to a back area. The room contains a few machines and piles of cloth. There is nothing else worth reporting. I believe these were caused by a pistol. I cannot touch them. The notice reads, please ring bell for service. Sadly, all I can do is read it. Yep, Madeline can't do much in here because she can't touch anything. So, we gotta get Jocelyn in here somewhere, somehow. And that's what the brick is for! A brick ain't gonna help me there. My host? My host. <laughs> Sorry, you say something? Certainly nothing that matters any longer. <laughs> Jocelyn is great. <laughs> she gives zero shits. No one saw me. No one can prove anything. Her methods might be rough and unrefined, but I suppose she did get results. In we go. Does she have to stare like that? It drives me batty. No one saw me. No one can prove anything. I have no idea how that got there, and nobody can prove otherwise. <laughs> you crazy? I ain't picking up broken glass. Even if I did put it there. I cannot touch the glass. I will need to have a word with my host about discretion. <laughs> Discretion's for chumps. <laughs> a jacket from two seasons ago. I guess this place has been closed for a while. It's not even my size. Ugh, the stupid rain. I look horrible. I ain't lugging that home. Huh, some kind of band. Danny and Linda Marconi? Never heard of them. We've heard those names before. Well, we've heard Danny Marconi before. Why would I want that? I've never even heard of those guys. They were all from last season. No point, there's nothing my size. Jeez, what happened here? I ain't putting my fingers in those. There might be blood in there. Gross. Looks like it leads to a back room. Nothing interesting back there. Just a bunch of sewing machines and fabric. It says to ring the bell if I need help. What do I need that thing for? It's just a bell. Danny? Danny, someone's out front. Danny, where the hell are you? Sorry for the wait, ladies. My assistant seems to be out. 
What can I do for you? <laughs> I love that moment so much. <laughs> How long are you gonna stare at that thing? It's getting dark. Just one more. It has to be here. What are you doing anyway? A man was murdered last night in the middle of a major blizzard. Believe me, I remember. Right. So how come nobody else has? Hey? I've been checking on every local news website all day. There's not a single mention of it. I called the police myself. We know they know about it. They must have suppressed the news, but why? I'm sure the cops got their reasons. And they can keep them. I don't care who plugged the guy. I only care about what happened after. I know. So, the victim didn't have any identification on him. I was hoping a news report would give us his name, but it looks like we're on our own. Well, something familiar at least. Let's go talk to our pet cop. Maybe he knows something. Yes, Joey was a tailor. Um, I didn't call any attention to it, but uh, the sign outside the shop window said Malone's Tailoring. And you may recall that Joey's last name is Malone. Uh, we also saw in the photo in the previous game of of uh, of Danny um, on the window behind him. It also said Malone's tailoring backwards because he was inside the shop at the time. Um, but yeah, very very subtle <laughs> subtle uh, foreshadowing. Another thing uh, that's really another bit of uh, subtle foreshadowing they they do with that is that uh, if as Joey you look at like any piece of clothing throughout the entire series he usually has something snarky to say about it because he he knows clothing he was a tailor <laughs> he's like oh that coat that, that that coat's destined for the for the for the incinerator or whatever it whatever it was he said he is picky about clothing which is really clever with a nice little touch add into his character, which, like, you would never know unless you already knew what his backstory was. I love that. I love it so much. I love the, the, I love the reveal. <laughs> so well done. Um, also, as you can see here, uh, see Rosa is not wearing all black anymore. She's got a shirt, a light blue shirt. She's got black pants, but... He's not a detective. Nobody ever said he was a detective. People just assume he was a detective. He's a de detective or or a gangster or something because of what he looks like. Yes, that's yeah, that's the for needle or thread or a fireplace. Yep, that's that's a line that he that he says. Yeah, everyone who like I'll, I've I've read so many reviews of these games that are like, oh yeah, they ca they call Joey like a, a detective or a, a, a private eye or a, or a gangster or something. He's not. The game never calls him that. Everyone just assumes that's what he is because that's what he looks like. But he's just a dude who happened to be alive in the 30s. And that's what dudes wore in the 30s. <laughs> yep. <laughs> he's just some dude. <laughs> it's a poster for a picture called Water Under the Bridge. Always felt kind of bad for Paul Meltzer. Must have killed him to know what his foundation was really costing people. What happened to the Meltzer Foundation? Reuters reports that the Meltzer, Meltzer Foundation... Is it Reuters or Reuters? Uh, the Meltzer Foundation has closed its doors. The foundation was only recently the talk of the VC circuit. With their uncanny ability to pick winner after winner, it appeared that they had the Midas touch. Through their efforts, they launched several careers in the arts, film, and science fields. The reasons behind the closure remain a mystery, as neither Paul Meltzer nor his co-founder and brother Charles could be reached for comment. Reuters. Okay, thank you. An article about the death of Gavin and Lisa. Good riddance to both of them. It's the German pronunciation. Gotcha. <laughs> Midtown double homicide still unsolved. What was noted philanthropist and charity worker Gavin Kaur doing at the home of Lisa Tenzin? Noted psychic and con woman this is the question police have been asking themselves ever since they were both found dead inside tenzin's home six months ago police investigations are continuing but they ask that anyone with further information please contact the midtown south precinct patricia blackwell she didn't like me much the feeling was mutual yes 1931 was that what that flashback was in 
Jeremy Sams. He helped us take down a bad guy last year. Shame he had to die to do it. Danny and Linda. I still can't believe this picture survived all this time. Oh, here it is. Yeah, see? It's backwards and partially obscured, but... Malone, fine tailoring. <laughs> I just can't come to grips with it. Just books. Some kind of pills. Not sure what they do, but the dog next door has never been the same since munching on one. <laughs> we got, uh, uh, memorabilia from previous games. <laughs> Those used to belong to an artist named Claude. Bit of a kook, but he didn't deserve what happened to him. He sure didn't. Just a notepad. Red was always scribbling away in it. Now she just pokes at that hunk of plastic. Hmm, I doubt it's the same one, but it's nice to think so. Aw, oh, dictaphone. Lauren had one. This guy was Joe Gould. I never met the guy, but from what Red tells me, he sounds like a real jerk. <laughs> she actually got... She, she took the portrait from the banana? Did she buy it? Dang, must have cost her a lot. This thing was on Lisa Tenzin's shelf. She was a fake psychic uptown. It's a gold tech mug. Lauren Blackwell used to smoke this brand. The way she went through them, I'm surprised there are any left to buy. Just a coffee mug, stained brown from endless cups to swill. I mean, better coffee than cigarettes. <laughs> a dog leash. She hangs the craziest stuff on this wall. <laughs> Just saying, free couch. Oh yeah, we also we get a, we get a different angle of of uh, Rose's uh, apartment this time, which is kind of cool. Just books. The kitchen is uh, this way towards the camera. Just a bunch of books. It's the way out of here. Some kind of door intercom. Can't do anything with that. Jack and Maria Blackwell. How long ago was this anyway? Thirty years at least. Lauren Blackwell, in happier times. Well, happier for them at any rate. I was mostly ignored. <laughs> grump, grump. Poor kids. At least they're all at peace now. Freshman Suicide at NYU Campus by Rosangela Blackwell. Joanne Sherman was an 18-year-old freshman studying political science at NYU. Her sudden suicide this morning has many school authorities asking why. She always had friends around her, RA Adrian Tucker said. Her suicide came as a total surprise. This calendar is dated five years ago. <laughs> that clock is right twice a day, but not much else. Nothing on there but a couple articles she wrote for some newspaper rag. It's full of trash. It's the door to the closet, or as Red calls it, her bedroom. <laughs> Probably the oldest thing in this room, except for me. I ain't getting near that bear. Red would chew my ear off, figuratively speaking, anyway. Nah, I'll let her keep her privacy. Red's computer thing, I still have no idea how it works. Red sticks that hunk of plastic here before going to bed. Keeps it juiced up, she says. I know it's cold outside, but I wish she'd get a move on. Let's have a little talk. Yeah. We saw a man murdered last night, and his ghost was torn apart right in front of us. No mention of the murderer in the news. Perhaps the police know something? The murdered man last night said the name Grace and that she wasn't safe. Jesus. The look on that guy's face. I can understand wanting to kill a guy, but that? Anyway, let's get a move on. <gasps> Who's Grace, anyway? Another spook? Whoever she is, we have to find her. My bedroom's an oversized closet, but it's mine. Auntie Lauren gave that bear to me when I was a kid. His name is Griff, the P.I. bear, although he's more the geriatric bear these days. Sometimes I think about taking Griff down, but he's so old these days, I'll just leave him. I can't go to bed yet. I have a full day ahead of me. Or rather, a full night, but still. I bought that clock at a tag sale years ago. It doesn't work, but for some reason I can't get rid of it. I know it's broken, but I've had it for years. It stays. 
I stopped updating this calendar around the time Joey came into my life. There's probably a connection there. I've pretty much stopped updating that calendar, especially since I can download a hundred calendar apps on my phone. Some articles I wrote for the Village Eye newspaper. I hated working there and the paper's been dead for years, but for some reason I can't take them down. I prefer to keep them. There's nothing in there. I go through much less paper since I gave up writing. I miss it sometimes, but I just can't seem to find the time anymore. Rosa and Grandma. <laughs> she kind of is. Trust me, there's nothing in my trash worth taking. My old computer. I don't use it much since I got my phone. It takes about an hour to boot up these days. <laughs> you need an SSD, Rosa. It's a charging dock for my phone. I don't need to do anything with it. My phone's fully charged. The last article I ever wrote, and the first ghost I ever saved. My parents' wedding. It's the only picture I have of them. They look so... young. Auntie Lauren and me. This was just before all the troubles began. Books on notable New Yorkers, all deceased. Never hurts to be prepared. <laughs> I've already read them, and I've got the digital copies anyway. It's the intercom to the lobby. If anyone buzzes up, I can talk to them from here. Why, there's nobody on the other end. I don't want to think about going outside, but I guess I have to. This article is about the Meltzer Foundation. I suppose they did some good in the end, but the death toll was too high. It's a poster for the film Water Under the Bridge. It starred Frank Lyons. For months, I expected the police to come breaking down my door, but it's been a year and nothing. There's no point in taking the poster around with me. Books on boat maintenance and navigation. <laughs> I'm not making that mistake again. <laughs> I've already... Grandmother Patricia, my dad, and Auntie Lauren. I never met my grandmother. I don't think she was ever prepared for, well, this. It's a picture of me and a former co-worker of mine. Jeremy was a friend, kind of. I never did get to know him well. Not when he was alive, anyway. This man's name is Danny Marconi. I only met him briefly as a very old man. Right. I've had it for years and it's only slightly coffee stained. It's an empty coffee mug. Why would I want to pick it up? To wash it, maybe? That dog leash used to belong to my neighbor, Nishanti. She gave it to me as a souvenir of how we met. It's frayed and chewed through. It's not good for much of anything. I snuck this bottle out of a hospital room for a college kid named Susan Lee. Those pills expired five years ago. I'll just leave them. You should probably throw them out. You know, dispose properly of your pharmaceuticals. These art tools belong to Claude Erden. Everyone thinks he killed himself, but at least I know otherwise. I'm no artist. I'll just leave it where it is. We saw this in a flea market and Joey bugged me until I bought it. He still won't tell me why. Aww. There's no point. I can never find the right size tapes for it. I'm no My old notepad. I went through dozens of these before I upgraded to this phone. The notepad's full. And even if it wasn't, I use my phone to take notes now. It's a portrait of Joe Gould. It used to hang in the Mineta Tavern. That painting is almost 60 years old and was never taken care of much to begin with. I shouldn't move it. It's a Gold Tech mug. I have plenty of mugs in the kitchen if I really need one. These were Auntie Lauren's favorite brand. I don't remember much from back then, but the smell reminds me of her. I don't actually smoke. The Siegel statue used to belong to Lisa Tenzin. I'll just leave that where it is. She just, like, took a... Uh evidence from a crime scene, or not necessarily evidence, but she took part of a crime scene home with her. <laughs> Got a sec? What is it? I've never seen a ghost so scared. Don't remind me. Jeez. Grace. Who is Grace? Whoever she is, she's our only lead. Alright, well, let's get going. Start pounding the pavement. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Thank God the coffee stands are still open. I think I'm really going to need them. It's your dime, sweetheart. Oh, actually, hold on. Before I go anywhere. There's no answer. Okay, never mind. Hey, look. Oh, it's you. Had a feeling you'd swing by. There he is. The police. Sam Durkin. I helped him with a case of his about a year ago, and then he helped me with one of mine. We've been paying each other back ever since. It's just a police car. There's nobody inside. I probably shouldn't mess with the police car, especially in front of a police officer. The station looks empty. There's just one officer manning the desk. He keeps looking at Durkin and frowning. I don't think he likes the detective much. It's a ghost town in there. Why is she just standing there? No wonder that cop thinks she's crazy. Whoever drives this thing is gonna need a shovel to get anywhere. Couldn't drive, couldn't drive it even if I wanted to. And I've never been a big fan of teaming up with the cops, but Durkin seems all right. No point, he can't hear me. No reaction. No surprise there with the weather we're having. Detective? Uh-huh. You found a Jane Doe at the Carth House, right? Yeah, what about it? Her name was Mary Meehan. She was an actress with the Gotham Collective Theater Company. You sure about that? Yes. I won't ask how you know that, but we'll check out that name and see if you're right. At the very least, we can locate the family and tell them what happened. Thanks. I guess we owe you another one. Can we talk inside? It's freezing out here. Can't smoke inside, thanks to our friend the mayor. So you couldn't maybe, I don't know, not smoke for a while? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I caught the evening news today. There wasn't one mention of the murdered man in Chelsea. That program hasn't been the same since they replaced that blonde anchor woman. Nobody else talked about it either. Not online, not any other news program, nobody. You must have suppressed the news, why? Because we're the cops, that's why. Look, before we take this any further, why are you so interested in this? What makes this murder more important than any other? I was there, you know I was there. Surely I'm a suspect. You think I'm crazy? I made sure your name is nowhere near this thing. And unless you give me a good reason, it stays that way. So tell me, why is this murder so important? You're the one who sent me there in the first place. That can't be a coincidence. So you think we sent this guy to your location to, what, get killed in front of you? I don't know. That's why I'm asking you. You don't get to ask me anything. You need to tell me why this murder is so important. He was looking for me. He was? Why? I don't really know. Uh-huh. Did you know the guy? No, I didn't. So, how did you know he was looking for you? Wait, let me guess. You just do. <sighs> Something like that. Something like that ain't good enough. What else you got? He was killed right in front of me. And what? Suddenly this makes it personal? Well, kinda. It might have something to do with me. Uh-huh. And why is that? Why is this murder so important? You've trusted me before. Why can't you trust me again? Trust has nothing to do with it. Look, I don't know what your deal is. I've never asked, and frankly, I don't want to know. But I do know that you've helped me clear a few cases. And once in a while, in return, I answer some of your questions. That's fine. Quid pro quo. It's not in the rule book, but it's how we get things done. But this case, it goes way up. We can't bring in anyone from outside a good reason. So give me one. Why is this murder so important? I couldn't begin to explain it. It's more than just a murder. More horrible than just a killing. Uh-huh. Any details on what that could be? It needs to be stopped. That's all. Sorry. I know we got an arrangement, but my hands are tied. 
Fine, if that's the way it is. For what it's worth, it's nothing personal. You got other questions, I'm here. Just don't ask about this case. You get me? Yeah, I get you. Well, Sam is stonewalling me. That's a shame. Um, incidentally, the, uh, you couldn't not smoke for a while, uh, is part of my favorite blooper in the series. <laughs> Which, again, I will not actually quote it because I want you to hear it for yourself later. You really don't want to go in there. Oh, really? Look, you and I have an arrangement. I have to keep it quiet, but it works. You go in there and start bugging my colleagues, it will come back to bite both our asses. And neither of us wants that. <sighs> okay, fine. No, Durkin was right. I'll keep out, for now. <laughs> I like the cut of your jib, see? <laughs> Alright, well, let's send Joey in there. Keep our friend busy, I'm gonna sniff around. Not that I don't appreciate the company, but why the heck is he just standing there? Oh, um, I was just admiring the brickwork. The brickwork? Sure. But when was this building built? In 1950s? I got no idea. <laughs> Low A water cooler in case the scorching hot around. weather gets too much for you. Whatever. Sure, I could phase into the water cooler, but why? For kicks? Forget it. Pretty cold to be just standing around. Isn't that what you're doing? I'm a cop in front of a cop station. What's your excuse? I'm, um, waiting for a cab. <laughs> it says authorized personnel only beyond this point. Fortunately, I think that only applies to living people. Maybe. At the bottom are the words Alex Silva, Commissioner. Couldn't take it even if I wanted to. This thing with you standing around? It's getting kind of weird. I told you, I'm waiting for a cab. The subway's just two blocks that way. The stairs are icy? <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Rose is trying so hard. Just a cop manning the front desk? You can't see or hear me, there's no point. No reaction, that's cops for you. A modern gizmo, probably some kind of phone. It usually is. <laughs> Everything is a phone. Looks like some kind of duty roster, nothing relevant. It leads to the rest of the station. The music in here is so cool. That elevator should go to the rest of the police station. Just as I thought, it's an elevator shaft. According to the nameplate, this desk belongs to someone named Disher. I have no idea who that could be. I'm not going to investigate every desk I see. I don't even know who this Disher person is. The name on this nameplate says Disher. I have no idea who that could be. According to the nameplate, this desk belongs to someone named Piero. I have no idea who that could be. Now that is a name we've actually seen before. It says Piero. I have no idea who that is. I'm not going to investigate. I don't even know who this Piero person is. The plaque on the door reads Interrogation Room A. Just a small interrogation room. It's empty. The plaque on the door says Interrogation Room B. Just a small interrogation room. It's empty. Aha! There's our guy. His name is George Austin, according to this note. Looks like he lived on the Upper West Side. That's definitely the spoof we saw. According to this note, his name is George Austin. Age 52, 87 West 96th Street. Do not talk to the press. That's def- According- Okay, then. We have a name. Excellent. Oh, wait a second. Hold on. Um, is there something else to... Uh, no, I think that's not until later. I'm getting ahead of myself.
Well, bye. <laughs> Actually, hold on. Oh, whoops. George Austin. The man we saw murdered was named George Austin. I'm not sure what he saw, but I think he was killed in both body and soul. He lives on the Upper West Side. The ghost we saw last night said that Grace wasn't safe, and then he went. Detective? Uh-huh. Does the name Grace mean anything to you? Nah, sorry. I know the victim's name is George Austin. Yeah, yeah, this crap doesn't impress me anymore. And even if it did, you're not a cop. You're not even officially on the books. So? Make it unofficial. You've done it before. Not this time, sorry. With all due respect, you need to back off. Well, see you around. Uh-huh. Um. Right. We actually have... Oops. Piero. No, not Perro. <laughs> She's not a dog. <laughs> okay. No results found. Domo. <laughs> domo, Domo, Domo. All you need to know about Tomo is there is no Tomo. If you try to find Tomo, Tomo is already gone. Poof! <laughs> Are you going to answer that? No. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, I love messing with Sam. <laughs> Domo? Domo. Tomo arigato, Mr. Roboto. This is some lobby. Careful you don't break anything, we'll be in hock for life. Well, your life anyway, not mine. Uh, oh, why? Why am I like this? <laughs> that vase looks more expensive than everything in my apartment put together. <laughs> Boo. Yep, I deserve that. <laughs> Boo hiss. <laughs> Better not. I don't want to break it. I'm barely in the black as it is. How did they change the bulbs on that thing? I don't recognize the artist, but it looks peaceful enough. He's watching my every move. Back out to the snowy streets. It's the way out of here. That's not bad, I guess. She's looking around the room and sighing. Jealousy, maybe? Is that thing really necessary? One strong wind from outside, and out go the lights. Ooh, does that mean... I'm not just oh. gonna blow on everything I see. Oh, come on. <laughs> Tasteful and harmless. I suppose it suits a place like this. Smart uniform, clean cut, seems dedicated to his job. We ain't sneaking past this guy. Hopefully we won't have to. Damn drafts. Need to report that before someone complains. Miss? I'm sorry, but you can't go back there. Residence only. Oh, sorry. He's watching my every move. Hi. Yes, miss? I'm looking for George Austin. Is he in? No, he's not. Sorry. Is there any way I can look inside George's apartment? It's really important. Sorry. Unless you've been authorized, I can't let you in. Is there any it's real so Do you know where George Austin is? I really couldn't say. Sorry. Do you know I Can you tell me anything about George? I really couldn't, sorry. If you want to know him, you should ask him yourself. Does the name Grace mean anything to you? Sorry. Nobody named Grace lives here. Well, that's unhelpful. Joey, snoop around a bit for me, will ya? Looks like it's full of old clothes. Must I define intangible? 
Holiday Clothing Drive. It's a co uh, it's cold this winter. Please leave your old clothes in the box below for people less fortunate than you. George Austin, apartment 12A. Well, that's nice. Just an elevator. Yep, it's an elevator, all right. Yeah. Generous fellow, this George. Shame he's dead. <laughs> Hi. Yes, miss? I, uh, heard that George Austin was having a clothing drive here. Oh, yes. George does it every year. He brings the box to Grace himself. You said that George takes the clothes to Grace. Yes, he does. He has an attachment to the place, even though we've got a fine church in this area. Church? So by Grace, you meant Grace Church? Yeah, the one downtown. What did you think I meant? Nothing. Never mind. Thanks. Sure. Aha. Grace Church. George, I've been referring to Grace Church when he said that Grace wasn't safe. Why did George go to Grace Church instead of a local one? I couldn't say. Sorry. Grace Church, Manhattan, 800 to 804 Broadway. Grace Church is a historic parish church in Manhattan, New York City, which is part of the Episcopal Diocese of New York. Grace Church is the National Historic Landmark de designated for, his for its architectural significance and place within the history of New York City. Rector Gabriel Ullman. New York Theological Seminary Alumni. Gabriel Ullman attended 1989-1993, currently based at Grace Church, New York, New York. Cool. The Grace George was referring to has to be Grace Church. All right then. We've got another lead. There it is. Huh. A church of all the places. Really? Ghosts don't like churches? Being a ghost has nothing to do with it. <laughs> oh, whoops. <laughs> Didn't mean to do that. If the people who go to these churches worry about their souls so much, they should try dying sometime. Weekend organ meditations. I'm not stealing from a church. It says Grace Church in New York, Episcopal. Reverend Gabriel Ullman Rector. I'm not. It says Grace Church. Of course, we knew that already. It leads into the church. Weekend organ meditations. Positively thrilling. <laughs> it says Grace Church in New York, Episcopal Reverend Gabriel Ullman Rector. It says Grace Church. They really need a sign. It's not like this place is easy to miss. I wish she'd get a move on. He keeps glancing up at the church. It's pretty solid, but it looks unlocked. It looks like a schedule of services. Fortunately, nothing's going on right now. It's a schedule of services. Nothing is going on at the moment. It leads into the church. Oops. No, we don't leave. Get back there. It's a book full of handwritten prayers. He looks edgy. I don't think he likes being here. Oh, you've been past this church in real life. Cool. I bet it's awesome looking. I don't know much about church organs, but it seems nice enough. I think, um, correct me if I'm wrong about this, but I think, um, Dave Gilbert actually sent Ben Chandler, the environmental artist for this game, like, actual photos to work from. Um, so, like, the, the, the um, 
So the image of the church outside is probably pretty accurate. I don't know much about church organs, but it seems nice enough. Uh, I better not, especially with that priest in plain view. He looks pretty deep in thought. He's leaning forward and his eyes are closed. He's either praying or sleeping. And say what exactly? <laughs> Boo. <laughs> no reaction. Probably feels drafts all the time in a joint like this. Fancy joint like this, I'd expect something with a bit more gravitas. My days of tinkling ivories are long gone. Aww. Yep, it's her. A book on a pedestal. No idea what it's for. I'm not just gonna blow on everything I see. This book is full of prayers written by the church's congregation. They're all anonymous and they're all written by hand. Please God, let the chemo work. I don't know what I'll do without her. I have been six months without a drink. Please help me last another six. Let my uncle get exactly what he deserves. I don't know what to do. I'm so lost. If you are out there, please help. Please help my family through this horrible time. We have already been through so much. Is there a light at the end of this tunnel? Is darkness all there is? Is suicide the only answer? I don't really want to die. Well, let me find another way. It isn't. Please don't. I love him. Does he love me? Please let my father wake up so I can tell him I'm sorry. If my son is with you, God, tell him I love him. I love and miss him, and his baby daughter will want for nothing. I want to always be as happy as this. I lost my job. It's all my fault. What do I tell my wife? What do I do? These prayers just go on and on. There must be dozens of them. I don't have time to read them all. Hi, could I talk to you for a minute? Please keep your voice down. Oh, um, sorry. Is this better? Yes. What can I do for you? I'm Rosangela Blackwell. Father Gabriel Ullman. It's pretty quiet here tonight. God's house remains open despite the weather. If anybody needs us, we are here. Why the whispers? There isn't anybody around. That makes no difference. The tranquility of this place must be maintained, whether anybody is here or not, especially on a night like tonight. Could you tell me about that book over there? For some, silent prayer isn't enough. They want to write it down and make it real. That is what that book is for. Do you know a man named George Austin? I'm afraid not. He was a member of this church. Are you sure? It is quite a large church, as you can see. I'm afraid I am not familiar with George Austin. Are you sure you don't know George Austin? I am positive. I'm sorry. Could you tell me about this church? Are you looking to join? Um, not really. I'm afraid now is not the time for a history lesson. Could you tell me? Are you? Um, I'm afraid. George Austin was holding a clothing drive that brought clothes to this church. Are you sure you haven't heard of him? Yes, we deal with hundreds of clothing drives at this time of year. Some we arrange ourselves, while most are volunteers. It is not possible to keep track of every single one. <sighs> Well, thanks. I'll be going. Stay safe. This is not a night to be outside. <laughs> You're telling me. Well then. Hi. Yes, miss? So, um, a while back, uh, someone was commenting jokingly on a, uh, like a handwritten note that someone had, had written, had left, like, in a, in a very specific, like, font. Um, and I mentioned that, uh, there's actually a puzzle in these games that is related to that. This is that puzzle. <laughs> Uh, you may remember that all of the prayers in that book were handwritten. And you also may see that this note here was written by George Austin. So, if, perhaps, 
George Austin may have written a prayer in that prayer book, we could, theoretically, match it with his handwriting, since we have an example of it right here. I managed to blow this thing onto the floor, but there's not much else I can do with it. Whatever Joey did, the doorman doesn't seem to have noticed. Um, dropped my pen. <laughs> and there we go. Now Rosa can, can reference it. Hi, March. Stretch. Hi. He's come to say hello. Or just sit there and stare at us, waiting for us to feed him. <laughs> it's a handwritten note from George Austin, asking the residents of his building to donate old clothes to charity. I'm sure they won't miss it. Do you know anything about the clothing drive mentioned in this note? Yes, we deal with some we arrange. It is not. With this sample of George's handwriting, I might be able to find something written by him. Gotcha. There it is. This place always brought me and Leah solace. Despite everything, it still does. Is this really what I must do? It seems impossible. I'm finding my faith is shaken to its very core. Please help me find the strength to fight this battle. If not for me, then for Leah and the others. I don't need to turn to any other page. Leah. In a prayer written by George, he hoped to save himself and somebody named Leah. George wrote Leah's name down in a prayer. Whatever kind of relationship they have, he must care for her a lot. Leah's name was mentioned in George's prayer at Grace Church. Was she a member? Um, hi again. Yes. Do you know a woman named Leah? I think she was a member of this church. Even if she was, I'm afraid the name eludes me. I'm sorry. Well, thanks. I'll be going. Stay safe. Yeah. I like the I like the concept of it, like writing it down and making it real. That's definitely a thing I can get behind. You're you're manifesting it, you're speaking it into the world, you're writing it into the world. Thus your Hi. <laughs> doing? Thus your your wishes will come true, or that's the hope anyway. Hi. Yes, miss? Did George know anyone named Leah? Leah? You mean the police officer? Police officer? Yeah. Haven't seen her around for a while, though. Did they break up or something? I have no idea. Too bad, if so. I liked her. She was good for George. Mm. Police officer. The doorman in George's building said that Leah was a cop. Indeed. Well, what if we talk to another cop about her? Sam? Detective? Uh-huh. So, George Austin was involved with a police officer named Leah. <sighs> That's it, isn't it? All the secrecy. It's because the police are involved. You want to get us both in trouble? Of course not. I want to help you. Look what I discovered already. Look, I keep my distance from you for a reason. I know you got your sources. I don't know who they are, but you have a way. That goes without saying. Leah Piero was, is, a fine detective. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Maybe you can help, maybe you can't. But I know you're gonna stick your nose in no matter what I say. Sorry, but I have to. Yeah, I get that. I can't stop you, but I can't help you either. You're on your own. Believe me, Detective, if there's anything I'm not, it's on my own. <laughs> well, just be careful. 
knocking stuff over. <laughs> Leah Piero. Can you tell me anything about Officer Piero? I told you, I can't help you on this one. Sorry. Well, I believe uh, Francisco Gonzalez, his voice actor, is a New York native. Um, so I don't know. He might be like playing up the accent a bit. I don't, I don't think he actually. I'm not sure how much he actually sounds like that in real life, <laughs> in his normal speaking voice. Well, see you around. Uh huh. So um, we did actually see Leah Piero's name before on the uh, newspaper. Uh... <laughs> yes, hi. Newspaper that uh, we talked about the drug raid at the Carth House. But that's not really relevant anymore. But we did see her desk in here, so maybe we can find out some more about her now that we know her name. Yep, this is Leah Piero's desk, all right. It's one of those computer things. Looks like it's powered down. Hmm, cute kid. That is a cute kid indeed. It's one of those... I'm terrible with these things at the best of times, let alone one that seems to be powered down. I assume it's a telephone, although it's hard to tell these days. Even if I could use it, who would I call? This folder seems to be full of old expense reports. Too many to go through even if I could open it. Oh, I can't blow on things on her desk. The journal is labeled Midtown Jaywalking Citations 2001 to 2004. Interesting light reading. <laughs> Leah Piero, 304 36th Ave, Astoria, New York, 11102. I have not. I should do that. I totally forgot that was a thing. <laughs> Actually, I've even, I've been on, no, I've actually interacted with Francisco in real life, not like face to face, but we were actually on like a, a stream. We did like a, uh, he, uh, we did like a, tri there was a trivia uh, contest that I was in with, and he was also, he was one of the other contestants. Um, and he and I were actually in like a hot, like we were in like a head to head battle for, for who knew more about the Quest for Glory series. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I don't know where you're going, and I ain't gonna ask. Just don't step on any toes, okay? We cops can get pretty touchy when it concerns one of our own. I forgot yeah, about that. so do I. That was quite a few years ago. <laughs> what did you mean by that? Exactly what it sounded like. Whoever George was, he was one of us. Us? Yeah. Come on, it's a long way to Astoria. So, this is what a cop's salary gets you, huh? A two-story in Astoria. It's not bad. Nicer than some of the foster homes I grew up in. I mean, anyway, I'll shall take we? It. Yeah, yeah, we both know the drill by now. Never did make a snowman back in the day. I suppose it's too late now. You're loafing. Where are your legs? They're gone. Someone stole my cat's legs. Alert the police. There's a porch at least. She can take shelter there. It's nice to see that some things don't go out of style. pretty dark in there, but it looks like typical <gasps> living room furniture. Just a mailbox. I love the idea, but I'm not really a hands-on kind of guy. I know, right? Uh, two story a story. Like, it's uh, such a... Why are you so disdainful, Joey? Some people out there would kill for a place like this. <laughs> Who 
whoever made this snowman made it a long time ago. Several weeks, at least. Frozen solid. There's not much I can do with it. I think one of my old foster homes had a tire swing, but it was so long ago, I don't remember. Um, I better not. It's hard to see inside, but it looks like a little girl's room. It's hard to see inside, but I think I can see living room furniture. Lock tight. I'm not getting in this way. The mailbox is a bit iced over, but shouldn't be too hard to open. There's a letter in here. It was wet and stuck to the side of the mailbox, but I got it. This letter is soaking wet. It's practically falling apart in my hands. The wired something. 163 East something. New something. And that's Leah's address. Okay. Well, that's half a clue. It's pretty dark in there, but it looks like a little girl's room on the other side. Locked. Got a sec? What is it this time? It's hard to believe a house like this costs as much as my tiny room in the city. Thinking of moving? God, no. We couldn't save George Austin, but we can stop it from happening to anybody else. With pleasure. George said that Grace wasn't safe, but he was referring to Grace Church. What did he mean? Is the church in danger? Dunno. Would a guy get that worked up over a church? I feel like it's gotta be more than that. Whoever Leah is, she definitely knows George. Hopefully she can tell us more about him. Can we talk? Yeah. Not a bad neighborhood, I guess. Wyatt. Maybe. The story is nice, but I wouldn't want to live here. Can't picture yourself doing yard work or cleaning the gutters, huh? That and the nearest cafe is ten blocks away. Huh. Lucky escape. <laughs> I guess Rose is a city girl. She doesn't want to live in the suburbs. <laughs> Fancy uptown address, the cops being cagey. This George Austin must be a pretty big deal. Guy like that must have some enemies. Who could hate him enough to do that to him? No. Nobody I want to meet. Why would George get so worked up over a church? Churches can be more than just a building. For some, I guess. <laughs> March. I know what your food time, isn't it? Close to it, anyway. That's why you're making... Oh, okay. <laughs> That's why you're making all these noises at us. <laughs> we gotta track down this Leah person one way or another. Let's get inside. Hello? Anything? Seems quiet so far. Let me look around. Painting of some old guy looking out a window. Don't know if it's art or not, but it's okay. There's only one key on the key rack. The label on it says Emile. There's only one... A dresser with some random knickknacks on top. Nothing relevant. It's a door. What can I say? It's a picture of the Manhattan skyline. I guess if you live out here in Queens, you'd want a memento of civilization. <laughs> Let's keep ragging on the place. One of the many variations of phone. <laughs> Just a light switch. Looks like a door to the basement. A painting of a vase of flowers. Why do people paint these things? I can only assume it goes upstairs. It's just a fridge humming quietly. Hello? Yeah? Is anybody there? There she is. Who are you? Mister? Are you looking for my mom? Uh, I... Yes. Is she around? Uh-huh. I have to practice. Sorry. Damn it. Yep. Best character in the universe. Although her reveal is kind of a punch in the face. 
because this is the first time we've had to deal with a child's ghost. It's a door, what can I say? It's just a fridge. KK the troll. KK the troll. Cute. Don't know what I can do with it. Can I go upstairs? Just a bedroom, pretty sparsely furnished. Nothing useful in here. Hi, Wilka Webb, belatedly. Looks to be some drawing of a little girl. It's a self-portrait. I don't know much about these computer things, but it looks powered down. I can't see inside, but it looks like a Valentine's Day card. It's from my dad. It's a door, what can I say? <laughs> Cute, but uh, I don't know the first thing about dollhouses. That's okay. Neither do I. None of my dolls fit in there anyway. <laughs> that bear looks like it's been sat on more than played with. It's his fault if he doesn't get out of the way. <laughs> it's really coming down hard. It's a stuffed globe of the earth. Even if I was able to, I don't steal from kids. Even if... She's left this shirt in the middle of the floor. I guess she won't be picking it up. Some kind of stuffed octopus. His name is Cute Thulu. <laughs> Cute Thulu. It's a stuffed panda. She's Pandona the Giant. Her home planet is the Globe Ball, but she's too big to go back. So she stays here. Yep, still snowing outside. Seems to be in good shape. She looks 10. Maybe 11? Too damn young either way. I don't know how the kid is playing it, but I can't touch it. Excuse me. Oh, hi. I'm practicing. I can see that. You're pretty good. Thanks. I'll only be a minute, then you can get back to it. Well, okay. My name's Joey. What's yours? Are you sure you should be here? Sure. I'm Kendra Haskins. Kendra! Are you here all alone? No, Mom's here. Are you sure? I can't find her. I'm pretty sure. I'd know if she was gone. What about your dad? Is he around? No, he's late. Late? Late for what? Picking me up. On Fridays we go to the Abacus, and then I live with him until Monday. But he's late. Hmm. Hmm. You said you go to the Abacus. It's his work. Your dad takes you to work? Mm-hmm. He's the boss. Your dad's the boss, huh? He must be a very important man. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Can you tell me anything else about this abacus place? It's dad's work. TVs and computers and stuff. He lets me play with them when nobody's around. No, not this time. Not with her. <laughs> Besides, it's not like that line ever works anyway. I love that response. <laughs> Just, nope, not doing that. Kendra? I need you to tell me the last thing you remember. Why? Just humor me. Um, I was coming home from school and... I came here. That's it. Are you sure? Yes. I've been waiting for my dad. Hey, kiddo. I'd like you to come with me. Um, why? <laughs> I'm gonna take you to your dad. Dad? Yeah, he couldn't make it, so I was asked to take you. What should I have for breakfast? Hey? Breakfast? What should I have for breakfast? I have no idea. Hmm, I have to practice. <laughs> hey, Kendra? Sorry to bother you again, but I have something I want to ask you. Well, okay. Do you know George Austin? You mean Mom's friend? Yeah. He's okay. Mom likes him. But you don't. Dunno. Can you tell me anything about George? He comes here and I'm with Dad. 
I found some of his socks in the hamper. It was really gross. <laughs> Can you? He come. I. It was. Do you ever go to Grace Church? No, but Mom does. She does. She used to go a lot. Not anymore, though. So your mom went to Grace Church. Yeah. I'm looking for Leah, your mother. Any idea where she could be? She should be here. I'd know if she wasn't. I'm looking. She. Tell me about yourself, Kendra. Don't know. <laughs> Tell me. About Don't so where is this abacus? Near the subway. Right. Uh, do you know which subway? Um, no, sorry. That's all right, we'll figure it out. We always do. All right. Okay, Kendra, I gotta go. But I'll be around to check on you, okay? Check on me? Why? Is something wrong? No, no, I just... Well, you're not alone here. You might not know what that means yet, but you're not. Okay. I'm gonna practice now. Sure. All right, well, on that note, I will end there for the night. And uh, we'll continue poking around this house next week. Um, yeah, next Tuesday will be more Truberbrook, and then Wednesday, more of this game. So, yay. Ah, uh, my god. I love the Blackwell series so much, as I've said before, and Epiphany is so good. And there's so much good stuff that happens in this game. Trooper's Day, yes. Tuesday, Trooper Brook Tuesday. And, uh, ooh, Nerethia is playing Final Fantasy Tactics, which, of course, I have to raid because of my name. So I'll send you over to him. And, uh, yeah, thank you for coming. Thanks for hanging out. And I'll see you next week. Good night, everyone. Bye. Except it did the countdown thing, and I did the thing again where I forgot about that. <laughs> Even though it's like someone else on my, on my, um, I was watching Ikifu earlier today, and he, he did the exact same thing, and I was like, oh yeah, I do that all the time, and then I went ahead and did that thing. <laughs> Even though I should have been prepared. Anyway, yes, goodbye for real. See you next week.